most cameras have a camera setting, and in that camera setting, if you turn on the grid, which is this button right here that I'm toggling back and forth, that'll set your camera up so that you can see the rule of thirds grid. So what is the rule of thirds? Um, the rule of thirds is how a photographer uses the grid, and the grid can be turned on on just about any mobile device. Um, but you'll see that there are two uh, vertical lines, and then two horizontal lines, and those lines create the grid that you use to compose a shot. And it's basically a matter of, of where you place um, objects. One important tip is to try, unless you're using negative space, to have something interesting to look at in all of the zones. Um, if the subject's really small and there's no other components that you can work with or elements you can work with in the photo, you, you end up using a lot, uh, wasting a lot of the compositional space. Um, you also have these uh, sections where those, those lines intersect, and those are called the hot spots. And the hot spots uh, allow you to place a lot of emphasis within your composition. So in this case, I'm going to use the F22 as my, my subject and get really uh, and put just the plane in the hot spot. And you'll see that the image has a little emphasis on the plane, but I can use that. And one of the tips is to use that to put emphasis on a close up and see how close I can get before it falls out of focus. And in this case, the hot spot is the pilot seat and so that draws your eye towards that that cockpit and changes the composition and changes everything about the photo um, keep in mind too you know use the angles um, lesson that you did to try and uh, experiment with different looks you can give um, the photograph uh, and again um, you know one of them is leaving um, space for movement so i might want to do that but basically that that use of these uh, that use of these uh these hot spots and the lines in, in deciding what your photo is gonna look like and using that space intentionally is the rule of thirds. And so the tips that are following are just tips that help you use that and be conscious of the photo that you're taking instead of saying, hey, look, there's a plane. Um, okay, that's it. All right, so the first tip for using rule of thirds, you're gonna use those grid lines, the two horizontal lines right here and right here to help place um, the horizon. Now, a typical picture for a horizon, someone would just look, and I didn't have a really sunny day today, but they would just take a picture and go boom. Uh, but if you're using rule of thirds appropriately, you're gonna use one of two methods. You're gonna either, if the sky is really interesting, you're gonna tilt the bottom third line right up to the horizon, and you're gonna let the sky fill the upper two thirds. This sky is a little bit boring because it's just a couple of high altitude clouds, but if it is, you could see that it would put more emphasis on that. However, in this case, so that would be my picture for that kind of composition. However, in this case, what's more interesting is the texture of the ground. So I'm gonna place the horizon line on the top third. I'm gonna get a little bit closer to emphasize that effect so that what's on the bottom two thirds is filling this horizon lamp picture. I'm gonna take the picture there. And that's all it's asking you to do. You know, change your angle, but use that grid. Don't just snap and shoot. Try to decide what's better. Uh, the bottom third, uh, this, this composition, depending on what's interesting, or this composition. All right. Um, tip two is to use the uh, position the main subject off the center and in this case I'm going to use the bench as my main subject and again if you're not using rule of thirds you would just say bench dead center uh, whether you're zoomed in or not it's still that same kind of basic composition and you can combine other composition rules for the shot for example the horizon lines part of this photo but all it's saying for you to do is instead of getting that bench dead center that you use the the uh, points, the hot spots here, here, oops, here, 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 or here, and you choose one of those hot spots to center your object, and that brings it a little off center and gives you a little room to look. In this case, I'm going to leave the room on that side. I'm going to use that upper right hand hot spot to take this picture. So there's my story of an empty bench at a park. All right, when positioning the eyes, um, what you're trying to do is consider the placement of the eyes on a subject, and it works better when you're closer. Kitty. And you know, right about here, she's not staying still, there we go. And so you can take the eyes and place them in one of the corners, or you could try to line it up 
so that both of the hot spots have an eye. Um, but she's not playing along. Her eyes are closed. Yeah, I know. There we go. One more time. There's your happy spot. And keeping that hot spot focused. And right about there. Oh, well, you get the idea. All right, this tip is to align vertical subjects. And in this case, I've got a couple of vert vertical subjects that I'm going to try and work with these two. Uh, poles and the trees. And I can't quite get them close enough to really accentuate uh, the effect, but I can at least demonstrate. And the basic thing is that is that your vertical objects, objects, subjects, should be in the foreground and in the background. Um, and you can play a lot with the way that they line up. You can try to line them up closely if this was these two po poles, and then kind of put them off center into the hot spots. Or you can try and line them up with other objects in the background. So I was imagining that if I could get these trees and these poles to line up, that might be a good composition. Um, you know, or it could be something much smaller, vertical line here and a vertical line in the background. And then that might be a composition you do. Whatever it is, make sure that you have um, different distances of your vertical objects and then line them up and play uh, with the angle and perspective that you're able to get. Okay, so for leaving negative space, I'm gonna set up a real simple demonstration. Uh, basically what you want, and the negative space can be a lot of things. It could be empty sky, it could be a blank color or a neutral color, but when you're able to isolate a subject and give it empty space, it puts more emphasis on the subject. So in this case, my empty space is the uh, pavement and my subject is the water bottle. Now keep in mind, you wanna use the hot spots, you wanna use your your rule of thirds, in this case, I'm gonna use my vertical lines to line it up, and I'm gonna get a lot closer because I want that to be a little bit larger. And in this case, I might wanna off-center it down just a little bit. And now I've got a lot of negative space for this shot, and it's off-center, so I'm kind of combining some of the rules, and I'm using that leveler to make sure it's perfectly level. And that's uh, using negative space. All right, uh, for this technique, it's talking about leaving space for a subject to look into. So I'm gonna take this composition of Lydia, who's playing along very well, and you can actually see a little reflection of her, which is kind of a nice part of the composition, so I'm gonna to try to use that. Uh, but you can see that she's looking out the window, and instead of you know taking a picture of her like this, where you don't really see what she's looking into, you're trying to give a little space uh, for that that picture to show what she's what she's looking at. And that's the image. Okay, for this technique, leaving active space, uh, space for movement, I'm gonna make you, I'm gonna have you imagine that this red tail hawk is real. And if you happen to be lucky enough to get a picture of a hawk in motion, and this happens, you're cutting off the head, or you're cutting off the tail. The goal here is to make it look as if there's room for it to fly. Now, if you could pretend that the rest of this space is negative space, then you've got your subject kind of on one of the left third with lots of room for it to move and that actually adds to the effect of movement. Um, so that's the technique. You find different moving subjects and you try to get it to leave some space for it to move into and then that would be my picture. All right for emphasizing uh, on a close-up I need to emphasize that this point is that uh, when you do that you're not just taking a close-up of an object you're using the hot spots to point out um, certain things that you want the viewer to see. So in the example on the website, they were showing a part of a flower that was in a hot spot in one of these intersections. And in this case, I'm going to use that to emphasize a part of this little flower patch. Now there will be limits as to how close you can get to the subject. So try to make sure that it's still sharp. And what I want to do is use that hot spot and get as close as I can to really point out the one flower that didn't bloom. And that's what I'm using in this in this composition. Reposition myself a little bit, get the shadow out of the way. And then I'm using the upper right, or upper lo lower right, let me try this angle. There we go, I'll use the lower right hot spot. So that you're getting close to a subject, but you want the viewer to notice the difference, the contrast in this case. And that's what you're doing. You wanna use that hot spot to point out something that you're getting really, really close to. 
All right, so when you're using the rule of thirds to compose abstractions, um, you have a lot of leeway as to how you use the grid lines and the focal points, but generally what you're trying to do is take a picture of something where it's not obviously obvious as to what the subject is. Um, in this case, I think I was looking at the, using portrait mode to kind of naturally balance these three elements, but I've got a couple of things going on. I'm using um, the middle vertical space to uh, capture that concrete and on the left there's the gravel and on the right there's the grass but I'm also using the bottom third as a, a space for that the rock that I'm standing on and hopefully I don't fall when I'm taking this picture so that there's a third on the bottom and then two thirds on the top and then the other thirds are being spliced by the lines and if you see I'm, I'm working really hard to try and line these elements up as best I can and when I'm ready you know again it's an abstraction which means that you don't know exactly what you're looking at uh, and it's more about playing with the elements than it is about getting a specific subject in mind and taking a picture of it. So that's going to be my picture. 